study we published last year called The Network of Global Corporate Control was the first extensive analysis of economic networks. That in detail was ownership networks. So here the nodes are companies, people, governments, foundations, etc. And the links represent the shareholding relation. So shareholder A has X percent of the shares in company B. And we also assign a value to the company given by the operating revenue. Who are the key players? How are they organized? Are they isolated? Are they interconnected? And what is the overall distribution of control? In other words, who controls the world? I think this is an interesting question. We started with a database containing 30 million ownership relations from 2007. This is a lot of data. And because we wanted to find out who rules the world, we decided to focus on transnational corporations, or TNCs for short. These are companies that operate in more than one country. And we found 43,000. In the next step, we built the network around these companies. So we took all the TNC's shareholders, and the shareholders, shareholders, etc., all the way upstream, and we did the same downstream, and ended up with a network containing 600,000 nodes and 1 million links. This is a TNC network which we analyzed. And it turns out to be structured as follows. So you have a periphery and a center, which contains about 75% of all the players. And in the center, there's this tiny but dominant core, which is made up of highly interconnected companies. 36% of the TNCs are in the core only, but they make up 95% of the total operating revenue of all TNCs. Years ago, Mr. Tronchetti Provera had ownership and control in a small company, which had ownership and control in a bigger company. You get the idea. This ended up giving him control in Telecom Italia with a leverage of 26. So this means that with each euro he invested, he was able to move 26 euros of market value through the chain of ownership relations. Now, what we actually computed in our study was the control over the TNC's value. This allowed us to assign a degree of influence to each shareholder. This is very much in the sense of Max Weber's idea of potential power, which is the probability of imposing one's own will despite the opposition of others. What did we find after computing all this network control? Well, it turns out that the 737 top shareholders have the potential to collectively control 80% of the TNC's value. Now, remember, we started out with 600,000 nodes, so these 737 top players make up a bit more than 0.1%. They're most, mostly financial institutions in the US and the UK. And it gets even more extreme. There are 146 top players in the core, and they together have the potential to collectively control 40% of the TNC's value. What should you take home from all of this? Well, the high degree of control you saw is very extreme by any standard. The high degree of interconnectivity of the top players in the core could pose a significant systemic risk to the global economy. And we could easily reproduce the TNC network with a few simple rules. 